Thank you for tuning in to this climate update. This is Alex Tardy, meteorologist with National Weather Service. We do have a lot to talk about. This should provide you a comprehensive update of 2021, where we've been, what's been going on, and what is expected over the next few months. We've seen some really warm temperatures across the West. In fact, record breaking as shown here over the past 30 days centered over the Pacific Northwest and Northern Rockies, where temperatures on average during that period have been running several degrees between five and eight degrees above average. This has extended all the way into Southern California. June, speaking of heat in Southern California, was all time warmest June for Several places in Southern California, here I'm showing you two as extreme examples, both in their location and temperature. Palm Springs, nearly a degree and a half above average for June, shattering its old record for warmest June. Big Bear Lake, up near 7,000 feet, can't escape the heat. Their temperature, a degree higher than average, setting them as number one hottest June on record. Okay then, why so hot? Here's a look at the average weather pattern, upper levels of the atmosphere. This is basically the jet stream, the same jet stream we monitor in the winter, which can bring us storms or be blocked by a dome of warm air. And that's been the case the past couple of years. Now during summer 2021, the upper level high pressure has settled over the northern Rockies and Pacific Northwest as shown here, extending into the desert southwest where it normally is, but this is much further north as shown on the image to the right, departure from long-term average, much further north, resulting in extreme conditions. The Salt Lake City Airport has seen 17 days over 100. Their maximum is 21. We have seen Death Valley again this year reach 130. Palm Springs tied its all-time high of 123 this year as well. Remarkable extreme weather pattern resulting in intense prolonged heat in the West. Temperatures have been remarkable even last year. If we take a look at conditions in 2020, it was the hottest summer on record for Southern California deserts and coastal mountain areas. On the left-hand side is the coastal climate zone, ranking it the hottest between May and October. If we look at the same for the Southern deserts of California, also the hottest on record. In fact, Palm Springs shattered some records with 151 days over 100, even five days over 120. This year, 2021, we were sitting at four days at Palm Springs, for example. We're also talking about precipitation deficits, especially when we start discussing drought. Across the West, particularly Southern California listed here, San Diego has only received four and a half inches of rain. That ranks it in the top 10 for driest. About as much rain as it's received is our current deficit for this water year alone. Take a look at your favorite location or where you live. These locations need 30 years of climate data to be considered. Now look at the mountain locations such as Palomar Mountain or even Idlewild. Those areas are moisture starved from a very dry winter. They're all ranked top five driest on record so far for this water year. Hopefully the monsoon will help with those deficits. Here's a look at a map depicting what I just showed, the water year 2020, 2021. It'll run through September, very dry in Southern California, especially the deserts and the mountains as discussed, but really the whole state of California has had about 50% or less its annual precipitation for this one year alone. Now, the weather pattern has been really persistent and basically we had only a few cycles of storms that moved across California and Southern California this year, 2020, 2021. That same upper level high pressure 
that was parked over the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Pacific is now shifted over land, but that same weather pattern that caused the dry conditions in 2020, 2021 is also causing extreme heat, combining with the normal four corners upper high that forms in the deserts during the summer. One of the issues is the lack of atmospheric rivers. All the atmospheric rivers, except for a couple, went well north of central and southern California. The earlier monsoon that was predicted has set up across the desert southwest, so here is some good news. Precipitation has been and will continue to be in July above average, especially across Arizona and in parts of the Great Basin and Four Corners area. You can even see on here our unusual thunderstorms from mid-July that occurred across northwest San Diego County brought unusual, significant monsoonal rains in that area. Now the drought is a reflection of many things. Certainly precipitation and temperature are major factors. The really warm temperatures and the lack of precipitation or the deficits will result in more severe drought and expanding drought. And that's what we've seen with D3 and D4, the worst case scenario for drought, exceptional drought covering much of California, Nevada, Arizona, and Utah, as well as spreading up into parts of the Pacific Northwest. The change in one year really shows how this is year one for Southern California with significant degradation in the drought. In other words, the drought has worsened substantially and severely across South Central and the Southwest part of the United States. We look at water supply as another factor in the drought severity. Now, much of the water supply in California and the Great Basin comes from rain and specifically melted snow during the water year. And with a dry year, 2020-21, 50% or less of average precipitation statewide. And this being year number two for drought in Northern California, reservoirs are at near all time lows. In fact, if you look at the cup, it's only a third full at Lake Oroville compared to the historical average. So not only is it low, historically low in comparison. Now, in Southern California, it's not quite as severe, but we are seeing substantial lowering of Big Bear Lake. Again, it's 14 feet below its rim level. The only good news is the Diamond Valley Reservoir, the largest in Southern California, does have considerable water storage still as this is year one of our drought. You can see back in 2016, it hit an all-time record low in terms of storage. So we'll continue to monitor reservoirs and statewide, they are significantly below historical average. Now across the Great Basin, the Colorado River Basin is critical to Southern California water supply. We are seeing remarkably historical lows on Lake Powell and Lake Mead. As shown here, Lake Mead has dropped below the storage trigger, so there is a shortage in that system along the Colorado River. And you can see along the bottom graph here, the Sacramento River and Lake Powell, the Colorado River, both are in the critical stage of water flows. Now, if we take a look at the ocean conditions, sea surface temperatures, we see several things that stand out immediately. We see ongoing marine heat waves. One of them is over the North Central Pacific, extending to the far Western part of the Pacific. Really warm ocean conditions. And that's also being noticed in places like Japan with unusual high muggy conditions or higher dew points well into the 70s a lot like what we saw in Southern California over the past couple of years. So these marine heat waves are important because they can change the local climate and the atmospheric conditions. 
Now, down near the Equatorial Pacific Ocean, where we monitor La Nina, we do see neutral conditions or about average conditions, but there is signs of another developing La Nina or the cool phase. We also see some warming of the water that extends across the Baja California region as shown on this map. These are sea surface temperatures departed from averages. Now, what is the outlook? The outlook is expected to be extremely warm, hot conditions across the heart of the United States late July through early August. With some of that heat continuing to hold tight across California, the Pacific Northwest, and into Southern California, you can see in the desert Southwest, an active monsoon should keep temperatures in check there, at least through early August. Now, what about the entire month of August? Heavier monsoon, well, at least now we're calling for average conditions, but that still can lead to significant precipitation in the monsoon region of the desert Southwest. Last year's monsoon was extremely dry. What about for heat? We are expecting August to be a continued trend of unusual heat across the Northern Rockies Great Basin, including most, if not all, of California. Some more heat waves in August 2021, above average temperatures. If we look towards the critical time of the year, the late summer and the early fall or the Santa Ana season, we are expecting warmer than average temperatures during that period, August through October, really across all the Great Basin into the Southwest. And unfortunately, a dry setup for this fall, no significant precipitation for the latter half of the summer expected other than localized monsoon. This means significant wildfire danger will continue. Already on pace this year to set records in California for acreage burn after over 4 million acres burned in 2020 summer. The prediction is for large and significant wildfire potential for most of California running through the late summer and into the fall as shown in red. Here are the highlights to keep track of. We had a really dry water year 2020-2021 only 30 to 60% of average, the drought has expanded and worsened. Reservoir supply is critically low across California and the Colorado system, but Southern California does have average supply. We are seeing, in fact, record lows on the Colorado water system. The summer 2020 was record warm with record wildfire in terms of acreage burned. We're not seeing much change this year at all. In fact, June was record warm, 2021, and we've already seen significant wildfires ongoing. The monsoon also has been significant in the Colorado Basin, so some good news there, but sometimes too much rain at once. We had a really active Santa Ana season last year, and no reason for that to change as we move into the fall of 2021. Fuel moisture is critically record level lows. We are looking at conditions a month to two months ahead of schedule. And that's been the trend really since the late winter. The rest of summer 2021 expected to be warmer than average. So more heat waves, including Southern California, Desert Southwest. We do expect periods of active monsoon, at least in the Desert Southwest into August. And that'll clip at times parts of Southern California. The SoCal precipitation for the monsoon is expected to at least be near average. So compared to last year, uh, that is significantly different. Stay tuned for updates on the expanding ongoing drought and extreme temperature conditions and how this affects our long and anticipated severe fire weather season.